If you like classic Chevrolets, both old and new, then this is the show for you. The Menard Chevy Show this week from Eastern Pennsylvania. Welcome to Moton, Pennsylvania, just outside of Reading. You might know it as Maple Grove Raceway. This place was built in 1962 and it has a ton of history. And there's a ton of history here this weekend at the Menard Chevy Show. Corvettes, Chevelles, Tri-Fives, all kinds of Chevys. We got Novas, got them in regular size, even got them super sized. We've got everything here. Doug Yoder is taking home the OPGI Original Award, and he's taking it home in this beautiful 1967 Chevelle SS. How much of this car is original equipment? The entire car. It's been taken down to the last nut and bolt and restored. Every part and piece has been restored on the car. How much did you have to do to this car, and what kind of condition was it in when you got it? Uh, it was terrible. Uh, the floors were gone. Quarters were so-so. Roof had some work done on it. It, 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 was, it was pretty rough. And it only has 20,000 miles on. They uh, left to sit in the yard and let the weeds grow up around it. How do you find a car that's in that condition and think, well, this is something I can take and restore and, and make beautiful again? Uh, it was rare. And, you know, it was worthy of uh, putting a little more time and money into it than, say, a regular 396 car. I can envision any car I can redo, but. Uh, these are, are very rare, and you don't want to see them get lost. How rare is this car? They made 612 of the L78s, and there might be 10 existing with the original drivetrain. How did you find this car? Uh, someone wanted me to authenticate it. He was thinking of buying it, and it was in Iowa, and I didn't hear from him for a while, and I emailed him and asked him, uh, how'd you make out with the car? And he says, I thought it was too much of a project. I bought a Corvette. He said, but I'll give you the number. I, you know, you can call the guy. I said, well, I already have two. I'm really not looking for another one, but he should have never gave me the number. Because in a couple of days, I was on, on my way to, out to get it. Congratulations, Doug Yoder, on the OPGI Original Award. And now a producer's pick. It's Craig Press in a great-looking Gen 2 Camaro. We bought it a few years ago to do a sympathetic restoration on it. Uh, unfortunately, after we got back from sandblasting and found out the original LT1 had swallowed a valve, we decided to go modified. So we bought uh, Detroit Speed suspension. I had this uh, GM 454, 450 horse crate motor, put a Tremec six-speed, uh, fast fuel injection, vintage air conditioning, loaded it up with some billet, and my brother-in-law did the rest. Now, there had been a restoration attempt on the car before you bought it. How much did that set the table for what you wanted to do with it? Well, I thought it was actually going to be better, and I realized why he stopped where he did. You know, things weren't fitting as good as they should, and, and uh, so, like I said, I can see where he kind of, why he quit where he was at. There's no doubt about it. What goes through your mind when you find what you thought was a Christmas present is a lump of coal? Well, you know, that's when you start switching gears. Like I said, I was going to do it all original Z28, and then when I saw that I was going to have to do a bunch of stuff to it, and we figured we, we wanted to make it the way we wanted it. Just as I've been standing here, people have come by to remark about the paint job. Tell me about that beautiful red paint. Well, that's a base coat of black with um, a House of Colors candy red on top of that, and then Jimmy does his magic with the clear. We drive it as much as we possibly can. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's, 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 it's like driving a new car. It's just, it's, you know, it handles just extremely well. It's like it's on rails, you know, like a modern Corvette or Camaro. Well, 1963 was the only year for the split window Corvette. So if you find one, well, you're pretty lucky. And apparently this car has a pretty lucky pass, right, Kim? Yes, it was a Texas car. I found it last summer. It was on Craigslist and eBay at the same time. And I was lucky enough to get it from the guy that bought it in the early 80s. Now, what was the history for him? How did he come across the car? He was from Pennsylvania. He moved to Texas, and he found it while he was in Texas. He actually had a 63 and a 64, but the 63 he kind of preserved. And he moved back in 1992 to Pennsylvania, and he stored it in a school, he told me, for until uh, pretty much last year is when he got it out to sell it. So this car is pretty much a barn find for you? Pretty much. 
What do you like about the 1963 Corvette? The split window. That's my favorite part of the whole car. It's one year only. You're never going to see it on any other C2s. Tell us about the car. What kind of engine? Talk about the specs. Um, this one is a 327, 340 horse, so it's a high horse car. This car came with nothing. The high horse cars had no other options for them. That was it. They had no power, went nothing. People in the know know what they're looking at when they see this. So, so what kind of looks do you get? Uh, thumbs up all the time. Anytime somebody sees it on the trailer, driving somewhere, I always get a thumbs up. Everybody seems to really like it. We're just getting started here at Maple Grove. More Menard Chevy Show just around the corner. Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Chris Austin's Chassis Works, the home of higher technology. Z-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Skog and Dickey's Parts Center, your source for custom-built street-to-strip power. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show. Now, when you're modifying a Chevy pickup truck, you can do one of two things. You can slam it down to the ground or you can raise it up. Way, way up in this case. It makes about 600 horsepower if you can afford the gas. And it's one of a lot of cool trucks here at the Menard Chevy Show in Maple Grove. Brought to you by Zing T, Peter Hagerman's 42 pickup is naturally cool. What makes the 1942 Chevy pickup unique? Uh, it had limited edition because they had to stop production in May is what it did, and they actually actually didn't really put a lot of chrome on the vehicle then either, actually did away with all that. What are some of the places where you see paint instead of chrome? Almost all the places where you had the grill area there and around your headlights, all your bumpers, none of that was really chrome. It was all done away with. Your handles, they kept them, the interior handles, they kept that, but as far as that, it was all done away with. What do you know about this particular truck's history? I'm not too certain of it, but there was a guy in Littlestown that had like a business where he planted trees and he used that truck running around in his business of mowing grass, I guess back then as a modern day guy and planting trees for people. And when I tore her apart now, she had 30 cow bullets stuck up underneath the dash in her. So I still never believed that, you know, if it being still not a, you know, a commercial car, that how the 30 caliber bullets ever end up in the dash. <laughs> so you never know if it was war effort or not. You know, it could have got lost, but what I can find, and it was titled, and everything's true, and the sticker on, you know, the VIN tag on the truck. Now, how much of this truck is original? Uh, the front forward, the front frame, the rear end, all that. The only thing you could, I had to reproduce, I threw the bed away, and you cannot get metal fenders in the rear and metal running boards anymore. They're fiberglass running boards. The running boards I had, like somebody had dropped on them, so I, did, I couldn't get them back. I think I had her for 10 years now, so 07 that makes her, yep, somewhere like that. Yep, was, luckily I had a spot in the garage for it because it's been 10 years. This is the first time it's ever been out, so I did pretty good, and Carlisle was over there, and we got wet, but yeah, this is the first time that it's been out, so I slapped her together. There's still some things that need to be done, but you know, it's a, it represents sort of the era. It's close enough representative, that's yeah. what, you know. That naturally cool truck is 75 years young and brought to you by Zing T. Brent Clark out of Coshocton, Ohio, rolled into Maple Grove with a great looking 56 wagon, a two door Chevy 150 handyman. I was lucky enough to find it in a cement block building in Westerville, Ohio. Believe it or not, traded it for an 83 Chevy Suburban. What kind of condition was this car in when you found it? Uh, it uh, had a lot of patina, six cylinder had been rebuilt, it was a power glide, but um, it was disassembled partially, but believe it or not, it was pretty near rust free. A few pinholes in the floor, no panels were replaced. Uh, believe it or not, the spare tire well was uh, intact. Uh, a lot of these cars, you open up the spare tire well compartment and you can see the ground, but not this one. Colors unique and it's obviously not a factory color. Where'd the idea for the orange come from? I was looking for something different and I actually found a 03 Mazda Protege sitting on a car lot and um, stopped, went in uh, to the office and uh, got the paint code off of that car to get the, the exact color. So that's how that came about. And what do you have under the hood? Uh, that's a 94 Camaro. It's an LT1, uh, 4L60 E transmission. What's your favorite thing about driving this car? It, just the uniqueness of it, I guess, and it does get a lot of looks. A lot of people call me a perfectionist, and it, uh, 
on the back of my trailer door, it's, it says behind this door lurks a disease for which there is no cure. And um, I've been messing with these cars since 1975. Well, if your car is cool and orange, you get to be in this segment. So we're gonna to talk to Derek Brown about this beautiful 1969 Camaro. Tell the story about this car. Uh, this car was bought new in North Carolina and the second guy that had it in Coshocton actually had it painted. And it, after it was painted, he essentially encapsulated the car and preserved it until three years ago when I was able to buy it from him. We brought it back to life and I've just been showing it and hauling it around the country since then. What are some of the details that you've noticed that you wouldn't see on a car today? Markings, paint markings and duplication of the way that the assembly line did things. Um, there's a good bit of detail. Correct platings and finishes on components. You trailer this car and you don't drive it very much. How important is it to you to preserve this car as it is? Uh, I do everything I can to keep it as original as possible. All the sheet metal on it, except the cow hood, has been added. Um, I love to lay underneath the car and look at all the original spot welds and the way the factory did everything. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's got all the original glass, including the windshield, which is kind of rare to find as well. Um, I like to uh, keep everything correct. I'd rather redo something and put it back on the car than buy a reproduction piece. Still more beautiful Chevrolets on the way as the Menard Chevy Show from Maple Grove rolls on. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show. We're just outside of Redding, Pennsylvania at Maple Grove Raceway. We've got a great crowd, some great cars, and a great facility playing host. How important is the Menard Chevy Show to Maple Grove Raceway? It is extremely important, and not just for us as a facility, but it's a very important feature in a lot of people's lives. I mean, we have a family that comes, and this is their family reunion every year. They spend a whole week, and they all get together. It's from the car shows to the swap meet to the racing. It's, it's a great place for families to get together because there's something for everyone. It's a Chevy lover's paradise, uh, hands down. And it's great to see all these different cars out here in the field that family members, like grandfathers and fathers and mothers and grandmothers can show their kids, this is what I drove back in the day. So it's great to see the different family elements coming together. Every year we have our Dodge Nationals. It's when NHRA comes into town and we have a big, big crowd come in. We have the Street Outlaws coming this year and we have manufacturer car series coming in. And we have a lot of different little bracket racing that is not little necessarily, but it's got that hometown feel to it, which is very, very nice. When it comes to Chevrolets, Yanko conversions are the rarest of the rare, and these Yanko Stingers are what started it all for Don Yanko. And Joe, what makes a Corvair Stinger special? Don Yanko's first car endeavor before building the 427 Camaros, Chevelles, and LT1 Novas, got made a deal with Chevrolet, and they trucked in 100 white cars, black interior, just like this, and he converted them for deep production road racing. And after they were finished, the SCCA guy came in, and counted them, and there was four missing. And he said, where's the other four? He said, I sold them already. So he got approved and they went road racing. 90% of the cars went road racing. Very few back then were sold as street-driven cars. How did your love affair with the Corvair begin? Oh my, 1965. I joined the National Corvair Club in 1965 and went to my first convention which is at the Valley Forge, Sheraton Valley Forge, and uh, right outside of Philadelphia. And I still have pictures of the cars and my daughters who were about that tall, just amazing. I collect a lot of things. Was a Yanko Stinger the holy grail for you when it came to collecting Corvairs? Yes, I had searched for one for years. I did find one or two that were really, really bad. I mean, I was willing to restore a car, but they're rare. But I always look at the serial number one to hundreds as, as it. Uh, I don't know how many of the red and blues are left. Authentic Yankos are hard to find and even harder for the average person to afford. So Joe Lienti restored his 70 Nova as a tribute to the real thing. 
The car was uh, restored about 20 years ago. The owner kind of lost interest in it. And we picked up the pieces from where he left off and we thought turning it into a Yanko tribute for Don Yanko would be a good, a good tribute to uh, the Cannonsburg you know, shop that he had. And you know, being from Pennsylvania, it was uh, you know, what, what we thought would be a nice, nice thing to take out and show. How important was it for you to preserve the Yanko name and pay tribute to Don Yanko? We, we really liked that the shop was from Pennsylvania and that it was such a big influence on basically the supercars of the day. We, we thought that, you know, this is definitely the car to do it to. The, the blue paint really was something that popped for us. And that was, that was kind of what we wanted, you know, to do. You know, there, there's a lot of 69 uh, out there that people do. The 70 you rarely ever see. So we thought, you know, the 70 tribute would probably be, you know, you know, since the car is in 1970, be something that's, you know, you don't always see all the time. What is it about Yankos that, that make them special to you? They're just different, um, and being from Pennsylvania, I think that's that's the, uh, the the draw to it. How often does it get mistaken for a real Yanko Cabell? Most people ask if it's real, and you know, of course, we come out and say no, it's a tribute. But uh, occasionally, we'll say, "Wow, it's, you know," somebody will say, "It's, it's a wow, it's a Yanko," and we'll say, well, "No, it's a tribute." But you know, we're we're quite honest about you know the heritage of the car. Coming up, we've got a couple of classics that'll make your mouth water. More Menard Chevy Show next. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Proformance Unlimited, your crate engine experts, building your dream and ours one engine at a time. Willwood Disc Brakes, high performance disc brakes and brake components. Exalta Coating Systems, we paint winners. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show at Maple Grove here in Pennsylvania. And what would a Menard Chevy Show be without a vet? Well, in this case, it's a Chevette, a 1977. But man, don't make fun of it. This thing can go. It's got a 427 small block, and Brian Anders can take it down the quarter mile in about 10 seconds. So it's a pretty sweet machine. You never know what you're going to find here at a Chevy Show. This producer's pick features Ross Gilbert and a 69 Camaro like you've never seen. This car is magnificent. Let's tell me about the paint job first of all. It's a fire ice red by 3M. It was put on in 2007. Uh, we did the backs of the seats, the center console. And how long did it take you to restore it to make it look like it is? Pretty much 31 years. I mean, I change a little bit every every year on it. Uh, this is the fourth different paint job I had on it in the 31 years. So, what's the next thing you want to do to it? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is we already have them ordered. We have uh, we have poly stainless steel headers ordered, and then they're getting jet jet hot coated, so they'll never change, they'll never rust, so they'll be on airs for as long as I'm around. So. What made you decide to put leather on the floor? Personally, I got tired of vacuuming it all the time, and the, the leather flooring and the vinyl flooring, I just have a little dust pan and brush. I can go over there and sweep it off. I can spray Windex on it to clean the spot. You know, you don't have to worry about getting stains in your carpet. It's a lot easier to maintain. Talk about the power plant under the hood. What makes this thing go? Uh, it's a 400 small block. I can't even tell you everything that's in this motor. My dad put the best of the best. All I know, it's a beast. It's got 530 horsepower. You hit the gas pedal, you're going to go. Well, how much do you drive the car yourself? You know, this time of year, I drive it, you know, every other weekend, every weekend, take it to car shows, different places. I've been coming to this show, coming here since 1982. In 87, I got this car, and then my dad and me both had a Camaro that we brought up here. Mike Appio has this beautiful 66 Chevelle Malibu, and it's the winner of this weekend's Rock Auto Restored Award. Mike, of course you trailered this thing down, right, from Connecticut? Oh, absolutely not. This, she's no trailer queen. We, uh, we drive her all over the place. It's really fun driving down the road and seeing people honk their horn and a little nervous when you see somebody paying more attention to their cell phone trying to get a video than driving, driving their own cars. The most recent thing I got from Rock Auto was some spark plugs. Shotgunned the electrical problem, and when I took the plugs out, found three out of the eight with hairline cracks, and they basically disintegrated. But uh, Rock Auto came through with good price and uh, got my plugs in and fixed it up. This car has a great story behind it between you and your, your stepdad. Steve Walker out of Columbia, Missouri. He was my stepdad growing up. 
But before he passed away, he had redone his 66 GTO, uh, convinced him to do the same license plate. We ended up with uh, Wicked 66. We debuted the car at the Anchor Fest in 2012, and we um, we put it put a dollar bet on who placed better in class. They call out third, and he ends up winning third. And I'm like, all right, you know, I got him, I got him. And they call out second, it wasn't my name, and I'm all excited, yeah, I got first. They called out first place in the class, and I was standing there looking like an idiot, because I didn't win, and I just couldn't believe it. And then uh, and I ended up winning best in, best in show. Well, when I got back to my stepdad, he looked at me and he's like, wow, I'm really proud of you, that's great. Now give me the dollar, because you lost. I got better in class. And we're just sitting there laughing and carrying on, and. He said, see, I told you, it doesn't matter. Ain't no POS Chevelle ever going to beat my goat. <laughs> great story from our Rock Auto Restored Award winner. We hope you've enjoyed all these great Chevys and all the people behind them. So long from Maple Grove. We'll see you next time.